everybody. Today we look at arrays. Arrays are ordered lists essentially. So how would a decision tree look like to actually choose an array as our standard container? I'm back here, back uh, at the decision tree. I linked the playlist and I linked the presentation that I use here in the videos. And let's have a look how to go to an array. First of all, we want to handle game data. The, the basis will be always abstract or an object, depending how complex your data types are. Um, if I have data that I'm not changing, normally it's a, it's a data table. We will use the city data table again here and have a look in it. First decision really is, do I have a first in first out principle here? Do I push things into a queue and then um, pop it back? Then a queue is very much the way to go, very powerful uh, multi-threading. If I want to enforce uniqueness across my data, I know everything is just happening once, then a set is definitely the best choice. And an array would be the best choice if I know that order is important. I want to have a kind of score list, I want to iterate in a special sorting over things, then the array is the way to go, because that's one where the order plays the biggest role. If that's not the case, then normally I tend to use maps. Simply maps are very, very fast, easy to use, multi-threading, um, available, uh, versions are available, but now we decide for an array, let's see how we would use that. The order is the important part. Always, if you really need to have order in your container, then the array is the way to go, otherwise better avoid it. You see, there can be duplicates, there can be single ones. The important thing is that there's an order and there will not be any holes in it. So meaning if you create holes, they will be reshuffled. At unique adds a value to the array and makes sure that that's the only value that is there, meaning it has to go through the whole array, checking it. Insert add inserts something to a specific position and will also reshuffle all elements afterwards. And place is what you should use instead of add, at least, because it avoids copying things and creates the object directly in the array. Even more more efficient is move temp or push. Push actually is the one that I would recommend if you just add things to the array because that's by far the fastest one. Removing element, remove is looking for the element in the whole array and will remove it if, it, if it's found. Remove single just removes the first occurrence. Might be something that is just faster, depending. Remove add, again, the position will reshuffle. Remove all is a predicate where you can define logic what elements you want to remove and pop the opposite of push is removing one element and gives it back. But if you use push and pop a lot, use a queue because that is then more efficient. We have some misc information like contains a num. Yeah, that is clear, I think. Then we have the filter. Filter again is a predicate and these lambda functions are extremely important because it's actually not hard to define um, complex logic with them that are quite performant where you want to define conditions, for example, um, yeah, filtering, searching for special cases, like here, name starts with something or so. That is something that you really can tailor to your use case. Sorting is quite easy, really, if your struct or object has static function that shows how, how the sorting should be. Like compare number here is just number A, larger or smaller number B, and then in the code, you can very easily point to that and have a very clean sorting mechanism. We will look at iterations, standard iteration and multi-threading iteration, and we'll measure them actually and see if for 40K of objects that makes a difference. So here, I just have a reference to my struct, provide the array, and then I can really directly um, move through that. Otherwise, I use the parallel for, meaning I have to lock certain elements, the value that I'm working off, so that I don't get any data raised if other processes are really targeting the same one. And we will really try that out and see if there's a speed um, advantage using that. So let's look really at the code from here. I provide the um, past bin as usual, so you just create a new h file, copy it in, look at the at the set, that's easier. I have a timer class here that I get from ILERO. It's an extremely good article that you should read really in the first line. The the timer is doing nothing else, it's kind of a stopwatch, really showing the microseconds that's, that's, uh, that are passed. As usual, it, this 
tarray generated h has to be exactly the name of the file that you use otherwise it will not work so depending if you change that name you have to change it here we have a help, helper enumeration that we use for our sorting so we have four different ways to sort the things and they correspond with four sorting routines that the struct is defining. This is our struct that we want to use. And as usual, if I expose one of these templates to Blueprint, it will only be initialized for one specific struct or object or actor or whatever. Meaning you have to really yeah, either change it here or use your own one. But the point is that you have to change this array test struct in the whole code, otherwise it will not work. The mandatory function that you need here is the double equal. That is important for, for example, the remove function. The hash actually you don't need here. I left it in because you need it for other functions. There are a couple of things that a struct should always provide to be sure that it will work with everything you want to do with it. The sorting is whatever you define here. What you need, you need a static function that returns a bool and has two of these objects, a struct here in this case, as parameters. And then you can define what you want. I defined here name, and number, as scanning and descanning. I have one delegate here simply to indicate if something changed and we will use it for getting a message if the array is manipulated, adding or removing. The T array is a U object. That is how we will initialize it. Constructor is not doing much. Then we have set dele delegates on array add and on array remove. So that is something we can optionally fire and subscribe to. These are the two. We will look into Blueprint how that looks like. And then we, of course, have our T array initialized with our array test structure. As I said, this test structure appears 20, 30 times in the whole class. That is something you have to really search replace if you want to initialize it with anything else. So here you see all the functions quite a lot, but a lot of them are actually redundant. You will not use all. So these are number of values and contains, so the kind of miscellaneous functions. And if you look into it, we really just expose exactly one single function of the original T array to the blueprint. Let's look at adding elements. Standard is, of course, I want to add an element to the array. There is an add function. You should avoid it. You should use in place. That is in very most cases is more efficient and faster. So better to use. Then we have the move temp. Move temp is something that is you add it here, but moving temp it means that you move the reference, not really copying the object. Push is the one that I always recommend to use. It uses move temp in the background, but it has a couple of checks to make sure that it is working. At unique, that is the one that is very resource intensive because it will go through every one of the array, looking the double equal operator, and then um, decide if it can be added or not, if it's already there or not. Insert add, same thing. If you insert something in the middle of the array, all elements behind it will be reshuffled to make sure that, that there is no hole in the array. So that can also be quite time consuming depending on the size of your array. Removing element, remove a certain value again means it has to check every single um, point of the array, every element of the array. So again, very time consuming. That is something where I would prefer a hash or something from a map. Then array pop and array push, pushing to the array, popping from the array. That is extremely efficient. On the other hand, it's of course what a queue does. So if you use it a lot, better use a queue. Remove all starting with is a predicate, a lambda function that defines certain logic. In our case here is the name starting with a word, with a substring. And yeah, that, that is a very easy way to do quite powerful filtering on it or yeah, removing something. Then array empty is just, yeah, killing all the elements and optionally reserving space for a new array to be filled. What is more efficient than giving back all the memory and then reserving it again? Here you have these two iterates that we want to test drive through this video. One is the standard iterate that you use. That is kind of standard functionality. I have a reference to my struct. I provide the array and then I can just walk through it and um, directly access it via the value. 
The other one is the parallel for each, where I have a mutex blocker. So we have to lock the portion of the of the array the element that we want to work with to avoid data races. Then of course we want to provide a prefix that comes here as a parameter into this lambda function. And then in the lambda function we can actually use it here um, and yeah do things with it, inserting it at the beginning for example. Good. These two we will test drive, both has the stopwatch, so seeing how fast they are, that will be interesting. Then we have the yeah, another kind of filter here, yeah. search for something. Here have a predicate, get name starting with, game, same thing. In the um, brackets here, the start with parameter needs to be provided, then it's available within the lambda. And then here we just um, define what conditions is valid to have it filtered. Same thing for sorting, also quite straightforward. I provided here the test array sorting that was the enumeration from the beginning, this one here. And that has four different mechanisms to sort things, number and names, ascending, descending. That is what you will use from Blueprint. And then we just switch over it and see what it does. And we, we simply call a static function that is part of the struct that we have here so that the array test struct is defining four static functions and these functions are returning the logic that we have. So meaning the sort logic itself is part of the struct, not part of the array, what makes more sense, I think. So here you see the static functions, they always have to be static bool and you can define really whatever kind of sorting you want to have. That is again, quite easy to do and then very elegant here in code. Looking good, so let's have a look at the blueprints, at the different nodes. Here we have the two delegates where I can react to and optionally really provide all these, you see all the functions have a bool providing if they should be fired or not. Then we have add unique and insert add. These were the resource intensive ones where you have to be very careful with big errors if you should use them or not. Um, might be that a set or something is something that, that, that is much easier to work with. These three things do exactly the same. In place, move, temp, and push is really the same logic. Recommended is push. If you're really just adding values to an array to do something later and um, order does not play a role, move, uh, use push. Remove, remove, add. Both are again resource intensive simply because they have to reshuffle or look at all the elements. And here we have the pop and push, same, same thing, getting the last entry of the array and deleting it. Iteration we will see. Then we have the predicates, find name start, sort array, and yeah, of course, getting all the values from an array to iterate over it is also important. So these are the um, yeah, blueprint nodes that we have. First thing, we construct our T array and save it as a variable. So construct from object, uh, construct object from class. Then we have this data table here. That is the data table cities. I point in here the link to the to the set video where we looked a bit deeper how to get that and how to re reuse it if you want and that is 40k of cities that we want to do we yeah iterate over the table and we push every single element into our array step one then we want to filter a bit find name starting with sun like san francisco for example and let's put the breakpoint here and see if that filter is working so breakpoint is here and let's have a look. This is 850 cities. And if you look at it, Santiago, San Francisco, yeah, looking good. This is the total array length, 41K. So we really filtered out of this 41K, this 850 cities that we got here. So looking good, seems to be my filter is actually working. And again, logic is very easy. You it makes a lot of sense to define the filters that you need because they are much, 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 much faster than doing that in Blueprint. So let's go to the sorting. Sorting, we had this enumeration, I have four different enumerations, and what I would expect, that the name is sorted as scanning, starting with A, hopefully. So let's have a look at my array values. Oops. Here we are, and yeah, looking very good. So sorting, again, working, and again, very easy to formulate and um, quite handy to use. 
Now let's go to the iteration that will be interesting. A standard iteration versus a parallel iteration. Both are doing a small string operation and iterating through the array and giving back the milliseconds it took. And let's have a look. Milliseconds in this case is 3,900 and some, so nearly 4,000 milliseconds. Okay. And let's try the same thing with the parallel for each. Okay, and that is around 900, so yeah, a quarter of it. So even this very, very small operation that we did here um, is enough to warrant the overhead that we get with locking and everything. So parallel for each, absolutely something um, that you could do, but you should measure it really, because for very small operations or small areas, there's more overhead than it's worth. Okay, that was it. We exposed an array, we looked through all the functions that there are, and I think it's actually very, very, it makes a lot of sense to tailor your arrays to your functionality because it's more efficient, better to read, and faster. Thank you. I hope it helps. Bye.